Hello, this is Vicky, the creator over here at Golden Goodies, and today we are back with another video. Today we're going to be making turmeric melt and pour soap uh, using the layering method. And I just want to let y'all know that we just hit 200 subscribers over here, and I am so happy. And I just want to thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching, commenting, and liking, and I appreciate you. Let's get into the video now. First things first, right now you see me cutting up the melt and pour soap. I'm going to be honest with you, this is like my least favorite part of the melt and pour soap making process. It's just so tedious. It takes a lot of elbow work and it's just a lot. So yeah, right now I'm just cutting up the soap. I'm going to cut it into enough pieces to fill up that container. Then I'm going to pop it in the microwave. <music> Okay, so now my soap is fully melted. I did that by putting the soap in the microwave for about 30 second increments. So you wanna put it in there for 30 seconds, check on it, it'll still be a little bit chunky. Put it in there for another 30 seconds, check on it, then just mix it up a bit. Just mix it, mix it, mix it, so that um, the hot melted soap can mix with the the blocks of soap so like i said 30 second increments and then you'll get it completely melted like this at this point i am melting my shea butter because i forgot to do that before i started the video so you're gonna see me start adding my ingredients for my turmeric soap i use rose hip oil only organic only the best baby uh, that's what you see me adding there then I'm gonna add my shea butter, melted refined shea butter. And I'm pouring that in now. Mixy, mixy, and as you can see, my soap is on the scale, so I am weighing out my products. The scent that I use for this turmeric soap is orange essential oil. I use that because orange essential oil smells so good. It's just like a boost of freshness in the morning, like you waking up and getting a fresh glass of orange juice. It just gives you that boost, puts a little pep in your step, and then it's an essential oil, so it's like aromatherapy, so it just makes you feel good. Um, in addition to that, if you're going to make this soap and market it as a face soap, I highly recommend against using any fragrances. Fragrances are just not that safe for the skin on the face in my opinion, just because people can have sensitive skin. Uh, fragrances are composed of a lot of different things and it just might be an irritant. And someone that's trying to work on their skin does not need any additional irritation coming from your soap. So, with that being said, right now you can see me adding the turmeric to the soap. The turmeric is like the kicker in this soap. It helps with hyperpigmentation and dark marks and stuff like that. Also my rosehip oil, but I did want to give you guys a list of other ingredients that you can use in your turmeric soap that are also good for getting rid of hyperpigmentation and dark marks. All of the ingredients in the following list have some type of compound that inhibits melanin production in the skin. Therefore, if you add them to your soap or your skincare product with consistent use, it will lighten the hyperpigmentation and dark marks and giving you a smooth and even skin tone. But keyword, consistent use because these are still natural products. It's not a one and done. Now let's get into the list and FYI, this list is in no particular order. So first up we have lemon essential oil, we have vitamin C, we have licorice root extract, turmeric, rosehip oil, and green tea extract. Another one that a lot of people use is kojic acid. 
it's somewhat, nat somewhat natural. It's derived naturally from the fermentation of certain fungi. If you are going to use this in your formulations, you must, I repeat, must do a lot of research because it is highly concentrated and may be harsh for people with sensitive skin and incorrect usage can cause skin irritation and discoloration of the skin, which defeats the purpose. As you can see, I already poured my first layer of my turmeric soap. And like I told you, we're doing the layer effect. So the way I like to do my turmeric soap is I like the bottom layer to be the darkest, the middle layer, like the median, and then the top layer is gonna be the lightest. And then I add my calendula on top. In order to do that, you have to moderate the amount of turmeric that you add into your soap. So the first layer, I'm gonna add the most turmeric because I wanna get it really dark. And then I'm gonna lighten up as I do each layer. Something else I want to note that I did not mention earlier is if you look closely here on this orange essential oil, it has a flash point. The orange essential oil I'm using here has a flash point of 115 degrees, meaning at that temperature, your essential oil will cease to exist. It's like it would just combust into nothing. So if my soap is 140 degrees and I add my orange essential oil to it, it's pretty much gonna be non-existent. So we don't wanna do that. So you wanna be measuring your soap before you add your essential oils because they all have flash points. So you wanna make sure you're either looking at the bottle and if the bottle doesn't say it, then you wanna look it up on your own. Before we pour our second layer of soap, we wanna make sure that the first layer is solidified because we don't want the soap to break through. Okay, now everybody lean in because this part right here is very important. You see that 91% alcohol? You need that to make sure your layers will stick together. If you do not fully saturate that first layer of soap with 91% alcohol, I guarantee you that second layer will not stick. And when you take your soap out of this mold and go to cut it, you will have three separate layers of soap. and. I promise you, you don't want that. So fully saturate the first dried layer of soap before you add your second layer. All right, we have finally made it to the last layer. And in case you were wondering, yes, this soap is very time consuming because each layer takes an hour or more to solidify. So if you were trying to decide if you're gonna do the layer method versus the swirl method, that video will be linked above. If you're short on time, I would definitely say go with that swirl method because this method is gonna take you at minimum four hours. Now I'm going to add the calendula to the top of the soap. There is a slight film on top. So first I poked a few holes in the top just so that the liquid soap can really uh, seep through so that the calendula can have something to stick to.
would you look at that freeze frame let's admire the beauty okay y'all but yes for real this soap came out exactly how i wanted the layers look beautiful so now we're gonna go ahead and cut the soap well that's all folks thank you thank you thank you for watching please subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button see you next time